Hello and welcome along to the seventh and final episode of this FM20 Beta Saver Top Hat with me, Daniel. I'm managing my beloved Luton Town in the Championship after back to back promotions in the last couple of years, and we're trying to keep them up on a shoestring budget, performing a miracle without making rash decisions. We start on the screen of James Collins as he's reached 15 league goals for the season now, a brilliant achievement for the Irish striker. Unfortunately, he does seem to be a tad underrated in FM, not even close to getting in the Irish national team, whereas as in real life he's been playing regularly and in the squads in recent months so it does show just how underrated he is probably one of the only ones in a Luton squad who is there's a few that are overrated I'm certainly not complaining but in this instance it's a little bit of a shame of course we're back for the final episode today as we try to secure survival and I'll show you in a minute just how tense it is but firstly a massive thank you to everyone that has followed this series if you've missed any of it of course do catch up on the eye above and if you have enjoyed the series please do put a thumbs up on the video it really does mean a lot and make a big difference of course with this series finishing there'll be some more space on the channel and that means we'll be starting our new schedule on Monday the head coach series is back for FM20 it's a journeyman story combined with the director of football challenge so if you've never seen it before in fm 19 and 18 it really is something that can be quite frustrating and absolutely brilliant at the same time so i'm really looking forward to getting started with this edition i feel like it's going to be an absolute cracker and our other long-term story with Dorking Wanderers will continue. The two long-term stories will just rotate each day. So instead of five episodes a week from Dorking, it'll be three or four depending on how the days fall. So the head coach starts on Monday, Dorking tomorrow and then Tuesday, and so on and so forth all the way till Christmas. We'll be back with a special mini-series. So if you're new to the channel or looking forward to the two long-term stories, please do subscribe for daily FM20 content. I'm really looking forward to getting going now, and I'm absolutely loving the saves we've started already. But let's go back to the home screen to see what the drama is today. We're back for the third from final game of the season. It's 20th place Luton v 22nd QPR, and you can already see how important it is there. We're on 41 points after 43 games, QPR on 38 just below us. If they win today, they'll go level on points, and barring Nottingham Forest not getting a result, we could well be on the same points as the team in the bottom three. We've had a brilliant season, but it's all falling away now. Even Charlton and Swansea starting to pick up points, so in theory we could yet finish bottom of the table, something we're going to be after very cautious to guard against. My one saving grace is our final two games are against mid-table sides. I'm hoping I won't need to show you both of them, but of course if we don't get the result today, it could well go down to the last two of the season. So let's go and get straight into this match against QPR. It's going to be an absolutely massive one. I'll very quickly show you the results we've had off camera just so you can see how we've been getting on. One big win in there but aside from that it's been absolutely awful as you were with me last time when we faced Stoke at home. We nicked a one-all draw against Preston with Colin scoring a penalty. Former Luton striker Jaden Stockley getting the goal for the away side. Then away to Swansea we lost 3-2. Again a very late winner conceded. This one because John Lundstrom got sent off. It's a shame because we were doing quite well until that point. Then away to Leeds it was the worst day of the season. 6-1 defeat. We just couldn't stop the goals. Then a 2-3 defeat at home to Reading. We were 3-0 down. It was our worst performance for the first hour. Then Brown and Bree with late goals for us, but it wasn't enough to get us back into it. Then a crucial 2-0 win at home to Barnsley. Luke Berry and Callum O'Dowder with the goals. Berry very rarely played this season, but he has done well when he's come on. And with Izzy Brown leaving in the summer, he's certainly someone that Luton will be playing. And then in the last game, it was a narrow defeat away to Huddersfield. Harry Cornick did get us a consolation on the hour mark unfortunately it wasn't enough though we still fell to a 2-1 defeat and that makes this game absolutely huge the bottom three are picking up points and QPR as we mentioned could go level today so in the wet and windy conditions at Kenilworth Road we need to make it a special afternoon under the lights so let's see what the media think. Who's going to be favourites for it? We certainly don't need to worry about FA Cup semi-finals at this point. Both teams in pretty poor form, though QPR won their last game, and I hope that doesn't give them more confidence today. We're slight favourites according to the media, and we'll be going out with a relatively usual 11. We've got some players that are tired, but I don't want to pay too much attention to that. Perhaps just Izzy Brown a bit too unfit to play. So Luke Berry will come in for him. On the right wing, we're going to leave Harry Cornick in, and fingers crossed this 11 will be able to do the trick. Hopefully Hopefully we'll be able to get a decent result. So the lineup in full is Simon Sluger in goal, Brian Potts the fullbacks with Bradley and Basham in the middle, Villar the holding midfielder alongside Tunnicliffe with Cornick and O'Dowder on the wings and then Luke Berry coming in behind James Collins up front. They played together at this club for years. 
So let's get into this game against QPR. We will go to a positive mentality once we get into it. Unless, of course, QPR are playing a strange formation, something we're not sure of yet. They're playing a 4-2-3-1 just like us. So we'll try and get on top and on the front foot. We want to dominate the game. We want to get more chances. We do that, we got a better chance of winning. So let's go to the positive mentality. Get through the tunnel interview saying we're confident about the lads. One or two more results and we do stay up. That's exactly what's true, actually. If we win today with the goal difference difference, we're almost virtually safe already. A couple of differences in that sentence, but let's go and get into the first half. It's Collins to Villar in the wet conditions, as he finds Berry on halfway. Early foul, and I know it's the first few seconds, but that really was a candidate for a yellow card. Just a minute gone and the highlight ends, and it's still nil-nil here at Kenilworth Road. Well, Luton on top according to the stats, but unfortunately it doesn't mean anything as it's nil-nil. We've had five shots, QPR yet to register at all, but here we've got a chance in with Collins. Oh, it beat the defender, but I don't think he expected it, and in the end he just headed it straight into the keeper. 20 minutes gone, we've been by far the better side, but unfortunately it's still nil-nil, and that's been partly a story of our season. Particularly the second half, we've really struggled for goals, so let's see if we can change that as we come forward now. Sluga, the goalkeeper, with a lovely kick out to the right. Cornick gives it away in the middle though, wayward pass across goal, and now I say Samuel can bring it forward on the counter, though he has been forced back by the press. Brilliant work from Berry, but it does go long in the end, Bradley heading away, but only as far as the midfielder. Now QPR can bring it forward down the left again, great challenge by Tunnicliffe in there, in fact with that we are going to change him to a ball winner, in fact we'd already done it so we don't need to worry. We're back with Cornick who's given it away again, maybe his fatigue was a mistake, we shouldn't have played him as they nearly score a screamer, thankfully Sluger seemed to have it covered. Half an hour gone. On QPR had their first shot, but it's still us on top at the moment. It's Potts at left back bringing it forward. Worked his way back in ahead of Galloway now. His long ball doesn't find no doubt though, and QPR are able to build from the back. Asay Samuel in the middle. He's had plenty of the ball so far from what we've seen. Find Scowan in the centre circle. Chair plays a 1-2 with him, and they're bringing it forward comfortably. Our pressing game not seeming to work so well here. We're not giving them too much time on the ball, but again they've got plenty of space, and Smith keeps the ball pretty comfortably here, though he is forced backwards to half. Halfway. Long ball through and Naki Wells is in. Gray saves Sluger and the flag is up eventually. I don't know why we see so many offside highlights this year. It's something I've noticed across all of the saves. Potts with Villar playing a 1-2 from a throw in on the left hand side for us. Odalda brings it down and he's kept the ball despite a challenge. And unfortunately he gives it away the second time. Back to Basham on halfway and now Bradley. Long ball forward towards Luke Berry. Clear to Potts and we're keeping the pressure on. We've got it in their half but we can't create a good chance. Here's the one though. It's out to Odalda on the left to the byline across the back post and Cornick can't bring it down he's forced backwards again to Tunnicliffe on the edge of the box but he's shot straight into the arms of Lumley and it remains nil-nil with 10 to the break we've been dominant and not taken advantage and I just fear that's going to cost us it's Villar with an in-swinging corner back again towards Odalda cleared away but it's back to Villar again into the box for a second time falls for Cornick and he can get it wide again Villar with a third chance to cross he's going to cut backwards though goes all the way to half Play. What an earth's that? He's given it straight to Potts and he's lost it to Wells. Good save Sluger to save the day. But what a stupid decision to pass it back there. And even worse to lose the ball on halfway. The first shot on target of the match for QPR. And that's going to give them a bit of confidence. Tunnicliffe heads away as far as Eddie is. They're coming forward again on the left hand side. When we went to QPR in real life, Eze dominated the match. He was sensational but here is Smith. And I say Samuel picks it on the right. He's going to get to the byline. Beats Potts to it. Into to Wells who heads. Good save Sluger. Did well to hold it. But QPR getting a foothold in the game. Five to the break and now we need half time. I think we might have wasted our best chance to win it. Well there's the half time whistle then. And you can see the stats are starting to level up now. QPR really did well in the last 10 minutes. So we're just going to encourage the lads to get back into it. A few of the lads frustrated by the feedback. Not quite sure why as we hadn't given any before that point. But it's a long ball forward from QPR. And it goes harmlessly out from a throw for the kickoff. Five gone now and Lumley's going to go with a long kick for QPR. They play really directly here, the complete opposite to real life. As I mentioned, that Eze was fantastic on the ball in the game at Loftus Road. But in this occasion, we've kept him quiet. He's been a say Samuel on the other that's done well. He's in one-on-one, -on -one. Sluger saves again. And although we're not conceding too many chances, the ones we are are absolutely clear-cut. So we're going to set the lads to be defensive fullbacks. Seems to be the area we're getting caught out the most. And hopefully that will just settle our nerves at the back and allow the front six to focus on four. 
forward play. Eze with the corner in, Bradley heads away, falls for Smith on the edge of the box, and he's back out to Eze again on the right hand side, Potts making a good challenge to clear for a corner. We're under a bit of pressure, but I'm hoping we can survive it, and if we get past this little spell, we'll have a chance to go and win the game. We're going to drop to a balanced mentality just for 5 or 10 minutes, and we're also going to demand a bit more from the lads. We'll wait till this highlight's done though, as Villar plays a 1-2 with Bradley. We're playing out from the back, but we can't find that through ball. In the end, Potts just trying to go long. How on earth is that playing out from defence? Villar in the holding role though. Can the playmaker find something special? Nice triangle with Tunnicliff and Berry actually, and he charges forward down the centre of the pitch. Got an overlap on the left, but finds Villar. Can he be the hero here? Beats one, into the box and cleared, and Tunnicliff brings it down again. He goes back to Harry Cornick. Beats his man back to Tunnicliff. They're just not creating Sunning. Oh, Tunnicliff does go for a snapshot eventually. Good save by the keeper and cleared for a corner. And we're back in the attacking mobile Luton Town. It's Villar who's going to deliver it. And out of swinger this time. Still no clear cut chances for us yet. Into the box. Headed as far as Berry. Had a yard but didn't shoot. And now Villar cuts it back to him again. But it feels like there's a bit too much pressure on him. Villar back to Basham. As long as we don't play that stupid pass back to halfway. Not going to mind too much in future. But the attack peters out and QPR deal with it easily. And with 25 to go it remains nil nil. Well a quarter of the game to go. Not much happening. Ryan Tunnicliffe's nervous. So we're going to bring on Pelly Rudder Kampanzu for him. Box to box midfielder, slightly more attacking. We can afford to do that now we've got defensive fullbacks on. Cornick's motivated, but he's also knackered. So I might bring Izzy Brown on on the right for him. And Kazenga Loa Loa on the left. He's been a hero a few times off the bench as a forward. Of course, he's only done it early in the season, really. But we'll go back to a positive mentality now. Berry with a free kick from the edge. Block to Izzy Brown who shoots. It's just ricocheting around in the box. We cannot get that goal we deserve. We've been the better side for the large part of this game. 20 to go though, can we find a hero off the bench or will it be the away side that deal the sucker punch? Long ball forward towards Asai Samuel. Potts does well to head away in the end. Only falls for Bennett though who can start again for QPR. He goes back to the centre after he goes forward. Ilias Chair holds it up in the middle of the pitch. He finds Smith and now Bennett the right back. Lovely play from QPR. This is the football we've come to expect and in the end they get it back to halfway again. Then they've got a chance to get it in on the left. Into Eze with a good through ball. Breeze closing down but not quick enough. Potts heads away only as far as going. You've got to be joking. He scored on the volley from 30 yards. There are most world class players could not perform that technique. That is absolutely scandalous. We're going to have to go very attacking now and we're going to ask the lads to show some passion. I just don't know how to explain that. These sort of things are happening now. When your luck's out it doesn't work. As Pelly Ruddock does the same and then hits the bar. His one doesn't drop in where Scoans does. And now Luar Luar's just passed it out for a throw in. I've just got a feeling it's all going wrong here. We can't get that little bit of luck we need. We need a big header from the set piece here. Izzy Brown loses out. Falls for Luar Luar. His shots into the back of the net. It's one all and we'll drop back to positive. As a point here we'll keep the three point difference in the table. And Luar Luar off the bench could be the hero again. That is Ace free kick. A brilliant save Sluga. It's all happening now with 10 left. Bree hacks it away for a throw in. Sluga with a brilliant save. Luar Luar off the bench back to his heroics. And we're forward again with Berry into Luar Luar. His header just wide of the post. If he'd scored two, we would have given him a big new deal. But as it is, it remains level at Kenilworth Road. Lumley with a goal kick. He's taking his time here. QPR seem to be settling for a point. I won't know why. They're three points behind us in the table. They really need to win this game. But I say Samuel's in on the right. Potts has switched off. What a Sluga done there. Oh, you've got to be joking. Just like real life. That is absolutely ridiculous. Drops across into the palms of the striker. And unfortunately, it looks like we're going to be relegated. Simon Slug has had a pretty good season in this game. But he has now cost us the year. He's going to get us relegated by dropping that cross. And his ratings dropped enormously since. Is Pelly Rudder Kampanzu coming forward though? A chance to equalise again, is it? Back to Izzy Brown. His shot's blocked. And Scoward nicks it off Pelly Ruddock. No decency there. He just hacked it into the stand. Happy to see it go safe anywhere. I'm aware it's not the most coherent commentary but it's been a frantic end to the game and there's emotions running high here. We throw it in and give it straight away from the throw in. Oh, Villar wins it back for Loire Loire. He's got two over on the right. One of them's Pelly Ruddock. Great first touch and he's in one on one. There's the goal from Pelly Ruddock. The long term player. He's come through from the conference with us. Signed from West Ham as a youngster. Played in almost every position on the pitch and he's come to the rescue with a few minutes left and now can we go and nick a winner. I know we should be hanging on for a draw and taking the 
three point gap, but that's just not the way we play. If we score a goal here, it'll be pandemonium, though Penny Ruddock's shot is absolutely wayward. We'll forgive him for not passing on this occasion as he's just scored the goal that may save us, but we've got five minutes of stoppage time to hang on now, and this is going to be a very tense finish. Pots into the box, falls for Izzy Brown, bobbles around and it's blocked on the line, cleared away, it's just not going to be our day, but a point is a result I'll take after the 90 minutes. The first half of the game was absolutely woeful, hang on a minute though, a Sluger holds it, if he dropped another one he wouldn't have played again, but thankfully he manages to claw on. Long ball forward, the full time whistle goes, what a game of football, 2-2, QPR took the lead twice, we managed to come back on both occasions, and two of the substitutes saving the day, after our keeper nearly cost us a place in the league. So we keep the three point gap to QPR, now what we really need to do is go and find out what the result was at Forest, hopefully they will have lost and kept it at four, that'll put us in a pretty decent position. So we're back to the inbox, we don't want to see that, what was the Nottingham Forest score? They drew one all with Swansea, who were in bottom place in the league, so actually it leaves the gap at three points, certainly not a disaster. Forest have got a better goal difference than us, that's my worry with them, whereas QPR's is still atrocious, so that gives us a little bit of leeway. So what we're going to go and do is play the whole match off camera, hopefully we'll be able to get a result in that one, and then we can come back for a relaxing final day of the season, or it may well be a tense one away to Blackburn. Well, big, big news after the whole game. We have secured survival with a game to go, and that's despite conceding a 92nd minute equaliser against Hull. Simon Sluger palmed one into his net again after another fantastic game, and it just replicates real life perfectly. Brilliant shot stopper, but then lets in a stupid one, and it almost cost us survival, but we have done it with one game to spare. So Colin scored in the first minute, Luke Berry with a late goal, which looked to be the winner. Their keeper probably should have saved that one. But with a game to go, we are safe. We which must mean that QPR and Forest didn't win. Forest lost 3-1 away at Barnsley and QPR 2-1 at home to Millwall. So we are secured survival and at least 20th place so we're not even going to be 21st and scraping it. I'm really so proud of this team and what a fantastic achievement it is. It's the perfect thing about Football Manager. All of these things that we've achieved on the channel, things like taking Torquay to the top of English football, now obviously trying to do the same with Dorking Wanderers but what will always be the best achievement in Football Manager it's doing something special with your home side. So I've taken the club I support and I've kept them up in a championship with by far the smallest budget in the league and I couldn't be much happier at the moment. What a fantastic outcome it is. So we are going to play the last game off camera actually as I've just seen that the first one was already about 20 minutes long and then we'll come back and salute our heroes at the end of the season and see who our standout performers have been. Well, we're back following the final game of the season against Blackburn. As you can see, we nicked it 2-1, but that doesn't tell even half the tale. I'm so glad this wasn't a game that was crucial for us and that we'd secured survival beforehand because the goal that looked like costing us the game is one of the most ridiculous I've ever conceded in FM. So let's go and have a look at it. Amari Bell's goal. It is absolutely astonishing on so many levels. I mean, thankfully, Pelly Rudder can Harry Cornick come back and save the day, but this goal is absolutely stunning. We let in James Shane goal because of the Sluga mistakes in the last couple and look at that Bell with a hook clearance on his weak foot from his own half. James Shea comes to the edge of his box and instead of putting his arms up to catch it he tries to head it and it goes just over his head. He then continues to charge forward out the area so he can't save himself with his hands and it rolls into the net despite his best efforts to chase it and somehow he still managed a rating of a 7. A baffling match day all round. Of course we got the youngster Corey Wilson on again which was a really nice moment for us but a bizarre end to the season between two teams that had nothing to play for and it was just a very special ending to a very special year. We finish in 20th place, six points clear of relegation, that was yo-yo in all game. Nottingham Forest drew 0-0 with Stoke which in the end was enough to save them but QPR for so long looked like they were going to survive. Of the 37 minutes they took the lead for the second time but then with three to go West Brom secured promotion at the top, they got a goal through Kyle Bartley and that meant they finished in the top two ahead of Fulham and sent QPR down reprieving Forrest as a result. So a brilliant game for us and a brilliant final day of the season. Wonderful all round. Pelly Ruddock finishes the season in form. We'll go and praise him. He's been a bit of a legend at the club. Been with us all the way since the National League days with John Still, and he's adapted to every manager and way we've gone up. Fantastic player. He's played in so many positions and it's great to see him having the career he deserves.
But the reason we've come back at the end is to go and have a look at the squad, see who our star performers have been this season. I've got to be honest, I've really enjoyed the year despite the tense and difficult moments, so I will probably continue to save off camera, maybe give you yearly updates or something. But of course it's going to be a very slow progress with the other two saves, so you probably can't expect that regularly. But let's go and have a look at the selection info, see who are our key appearance makers this year. James Collins top of the list, 50 appearances in all competitions, 48 starts with two sub appearances, Appearances, closely followed by Simon Sluger, and then the likes of Cornick, O'Dowd and Aloni, Sonny Bradley in the 40s as well, and Gonzalo Villa up there too. He was certainly the signing of the season. Let's have a look at goals. James Collins well clear again, 16 for him across the board, and then 7 for Cornick, 6 for O'Dowd and Lawalawa. So many crucial goals off the bench for him, including the one that secured survival. We've got Pelly Ruddock and Berry and Izzy Brown contributing a couple, but goals from midfield really was a problem this year. And if we're not able to get another good striker in, we could really be in trouble with that in the future. And in assists, you can see Harry Cornick's top on seven, closely followed by Villar, the playmaker, and then everyone else on three or below, including Martin Craney, who had that long-term injury. Then an average rating, probably the most remarkable I've ever seen on this game. Only one player reaching a rating of a seven. James Collins, despite 16 goals, didn't do it. Sluger was our third best player, and to be fair, if it hadn't been for the last couple of games, he possibly would have breached the seven rating overall. Alan Sheehan only made two appearances, so we have to exclude him, but a great club captain off the pitch and I'm sure he made his contributions. So we didn't perform too well individually but as a team we managed to get the job done. It wasn't always pretty and it wasn't always brilliant to watch but we finished six points clear of the relegation pack and survive ahead of some much bigger sides with far grander budgets than we have. So a wonderful season overall. I am going to play the transfer window off camera but it is the end of the series and this beat to save with Luton Town and I can't thank you enough for following along with it. If you did enjoy the final one and see a secure survival please do put a thumbs up on the video of course as we mentioned a bit earlier we will be starting our new schedule on monday and that will be with the return of the head coach the fm20 edition will be back at 4 30 on monday and i really can't wait to get cracking with that one then the two long-term stories will rotate every day so dorkin wanderers will be on tuesday and so on and so forth all the way through to christmas but we'll have a special mini series for the christmas week Subscribe to the channel if you're looking forward to that and for daily FM20 content and there's also two episodes a week from my Cricket 19 career then one Tuesday and Saturday at midday. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series and channel as always. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you tomorrow for the return of Dorking Wanderers as we get going with a transfer special at the start of Season 3 in the National League.